so nicely, doesn't it? Hi, everybody. Let me see. I got to take this off. And turn that off. Oh, what do I got to turn off here? Hey, everybody. Glad you're here. If it's 7 o'clock and I'm Sean... And you know what this is. Go ahead and say it at home. It's Sean at 7. And there comes the lights. Yay! All right. What is that shadow there? Oh, well. All right. Look at everybody here watching already. Okay. Well, we are glad. We are glad to have you. Debbie joined us for the first time. Hi, Debbie. We're happy you're here. 
All right, let's pray. Jesus, in your name, we are just thrilled that once again we can stay connected. It may not be actual, but our spirits are still connected. We are one in the Spirit. We are one in the Lord. Father, your prayer is that we would be united as you are united to the Father. So Jesus, in your name, we just say right now that we refuse to let loneliness dictate any of our decisions. We know we are connected and we know that we as the body of Christ are united in fighting this attack of the enemy called COVID-19. It cannot stand in the name of Jesus. We curse it. We speak healing to everybody who's battling it. We speak life and strength and peace to everybody on the front lines in whatever capacity they're in. And Jesus, we know no weapon formed against us will prosper. And we intercede for our country. Jesus, in your name, forgive us. Forgive us as a nation for picking any other God besides you. Forgive us, Lord, for picking the God of violence and bloodshed, the God of sexual expression, the God of money, the God of power, the God of self-aggrandizement, the God of drugs and alcohol. Father, forgive us. We have chosen any other option besides you, and we as a nation right now, and we as the world are suffering because, Father, we have sown, and now we're reaping. And so, Jesus, forgive us. Forgive us, Father. We have told you to leave us alone enough, and then we're shocked when we aren't as protected as we thought we were. So, Jesus, in your name, we stand up as the body of Christ. We repent. We say, Lord, forgive us. Forgive us, Lord. And yet we come back again, time and time again, with absolute hope and absolute assurance that when the people of God come back and pray and when they turn from their wicked ways, when they repent and when they seek your face, then you will hear from heaven, then will you heal our lands. And Father, we know that as New Testament believers, we can have the mind of Christ and we can articulate the heart of God. So, Lord, that's what we're going to do tonight. We pray all these things in your name. And everybody said, Amen. Hey, um, go grab your Bible. We are continuing on. Everybody, grab your Bible. Go to Genesis chapter 27. We're not going to read too much out of the text, but we're going to continue in our stories. So, if you are keeping score at home, and you're trying to figure out, okay, what in the heck is Sean going to talk about today? Well, welcome to the party, because I very frequently have the question, what in the heck is Sean going to talk about today? But, for the most part, Sean at 7, which is Monday night, Wednesday night, and Thursday night. I'm walking through the lives of the patriarchs in the Old Testament, and we're looking at all the different ways people who've believed in God have gone through crisis. Tuesday night Bible study, we're still kind of looking at the life of Joseph, which is technically a patriarch, so sometimes the story gets mixed around a little bit. Uh, next week, I'll probably go all Easter elements leading up to Easter Sunday. Friday night worship and prayer is just what it's always been. So that, again, starts at 7. So there's something at 7, Monday through Friday. And then I usually have the message posted sometime Saturday afternoon so we can all stay connected because we refuse to let this be, let this coronavirus time lull us back into bad habits. This is the coronavirus consecration. Amen? Say it with me. Coronavirus consecration. Friends, you need to, we need to get as close to Jesus as we possibly can. I was up till probably 2.30 praying last night, and then I made a commitment today to see if I could pray the entire day long, and I, and I, and I did all right. And folks, let me just encourage you, if you're getting discouraged, do not get discouraged. You've got to understand something. This coronavirus is Satan's latest attempt to kill thousands of people. Remember, the thief comes to steal kill, and destroy. He's trying to steal peace. He's trying to create chaos. Because when chaos is created, people go back to making bad choices. Satan knows if he can start wiping people off the face of the earth, people are going to go back to their addictions. They're going to go back to their bad habits. And he's going to have his hooks in us for years to come. Okay? He used to be able to do this 
through war and through world war. Well, folks, we haven't had world wars in a long time. And yes, he kills people through wars, but understand something. These viruses that have come out of China from their wet markets have been killing thousands of people at a time for probably 15 years. It's just this is the first time it's really hit America hard. If we spend all of our time as Americans telling God to leave us alone, guess what, folks? He does. And if you remember what Jesus says. Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, I, how I wanted to long, long to gather you together like a hen gathers its chicks. That is a protection statement. Remember uh, I, uh, Psalms 91, he who dwells under the shadow of his wings. This is what Jesus is alluding to. He says, I have wanted to protect you like this, but you refused. And that's where I think we find ourselves right now. A lot of Republicans want to blame Democrats. A lot of Democrats want to re want to blame Republicans. But folks, get one. Uh, Fox wants to blame CNN. CNN wants to blame Fox. Folks, understand something. Not one person who died in Italy died thinking, "Hey, now I'm going to show it to the American media. Now I'm going to show it to the American political system." <sighs> Chaos brings out the worst in people. So how do we? fight this, we act in the opposite spirit. So instead of letting this bring the worst out in us, we stop blaming, we start praying. We do what Jesus did. We take on the sins of other people. So when I do the repentance time that I've been doing constantly, you heard, you've heard me go through this a number of times. I can repent for sins that I didn't commit because I've committed sins in the same vein. Does that make sense? I've, I've never been violent to anyone. I've, I've never shed innocent blood like, like murder and or abortion. But I have had the impulse to hurt someone. I just fortunately have never gone on to it. I can still repent for other people. And this is what our nation absolutely has to do. Okay? We are in the New Testament. The wrath of God came upon sin in the body of Jesus. The law articulated. This is what sin is. Once that got brought together. That was laid on Jesus' body. And sin was judged by God. In the body of Jesus. God didn't slaughter Jesus. To, to pay for other people's sin. But Jesus took on the sin. And God punished sin. In the body of Jesus. Okay. So what, what we call the judgment of God is really God just stepping back. Let I me mean, think about this for a second. What was the last thing Jesus said just before he died? My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? That is the ultimate judgment of God, him stepping back. Him lifting his element of protection. Excuse me, his element of protection. So what we are dealing with as a nation is we have sown and reaped independence from God for so long, we shouldn't be shocked that our walls and our protections are very light. And that's why we go back to praying. And that's why we go back to repenting. And every time I pray for anything result relating to the coronavirus, I go through and I repent of the sins of our nation. And, I'm, and it looks like I'm not even going to get to the story tonight because I'm kind of stuck on this. I repent for the shedding of innocent blood. And that's in our history. And that's in abortion. I repent for exalting the God of sexuality. I repent of worshiping the false God of money. I repent of worshiping the false God of power. I repent worshiping the false God of self-aggrandizement. And who the heck are we kidding? Just about every politician that has ever gotten elected for anything has been obsessed obsessed with self-aggrandizement, money, and power. Uh, so let's see. Um, shedding of innocent blood, sexuality, worshiping the false god of money, worshiping the false god of power, worshiping the false god of self-aggrandizement. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Prayer journal. See, folks? This is why you have a prayer journal.
talking with one of my favorite people on the planet, and they said their brain was scatterbrained when they prayed. And I suggested, this is why you have a prayer journal, because it forces you to slow your brain down and do one at a time. Um, and I have all this written down. I have all this written down. I have all this written down. All right, shed innocent blood. Pursue the false god of sexuality. Pursue the false god of power. Pursue the false god of entertainment. That's the other thing. Friends, everybody wants to blame everybody else for, for COVID and saying, and, and I don't get the people who say this was created in a, in a lab. Have you ever seen the wet markets in China? Satan has been using China to kill Christians for decades, if not possibly a century now. And now you have a biological hazard in these wet markets that have been kicking out these diseases for decades. And the only reason America hasn't, has, wasn't as obsessed with H1N1 or the swine flu or um, what, whatever the other flu was is because the people who died were from Africa. And that didn't bother us as much. Satan just creates enough chaos. We start killing each other. We start going back to our old addictive habits. We start worshiping the God of entertainment again. Right? Um, I'm going to go through the list again. We've shed innocent blood. We follow the false god of sexuality. We follow the false god of power. We follow the false god of entertainment. We follow the false god of money. We follow the false god of, of self-aggrandizement. We follow the false god of alcohol and drugs. Okay. And that, that's my list. You may have seen if other people have lists. And self-sufficiency. Oh, that's a good one. So I'm going to write that down in my prayer journal. <laughs> Uh, independent rebellion. Yep. Pride and arrogance. Yep. And folks, that's, that's what's been on my heart today. Satan used to terrify people with war. And I mean, he still does. But that was his main way of comfort. Oh, absolutely. We, we worship the false god of comfort. Satan just has to terrify us to have us go back to things that are just going to numb the pain. That are going to activate our flesh. Folks, the judgment of God is him lifting his hand of protection and letting Satan have us. And I shouldn't say letting Satan have us. Letting us choose anything but God. Remember that, friends. Hell is a loving God giving people the independence from God that they love. Hell is the final encapsulation of all evil for all time. It's designed for Satan and his angels, not people. Just like a freeway is designed for cars, not children walking on the cars. I'm sorry, walking on the freeway, right? God's ultimate judgment is him lifting his hands and Satan coming in and just throttling people. Do you, you want to know Satan's plan for the planet? Look at the story of Noah's Ark. And then once again, when the restrainer is lifted, the restraining force of the Holy Spirit is lifted at the end times, Satan has his final chance to run roughshod over people. And that's why Jesus said at the final moment, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Does this make sense? I hope it does. And, and, and I really hope no one connected with the church is blaming anybody for this except Satan. Could we have done better? Oh, yeah. Could we have done massively better? Oh, yeah. We, we as a nation should be embarrassed. But that's not the point. The point is, we know who to blame. And for all the people who are saying, well, God's just trying to get our attention. Folks, God's always trying to get our attention. Always. He may have our attention a little better. <laughs> and, and I've said to a number of people, we're battling anxiety right now. You can't afford to say anything in your life Jesus wouldn't say. You can't afford to spend your time any way different than Jesus would spend it. This is our chance. This is our chance. 
And if you don't know how to pray for a long time, go to YouTube, look up Living Hope Spokane, and I have on there how to pray for an hour. And it's about 45 minutes long. And what I do is I demonstrate. Here's how you pray for consecration. And then I pray through it. You can pray right along with me. You can say amen. And then like when I'm praying for people in your life that you love, I'll say, okay, now stop the video and you pray through your list. Can you imagine what would happen to our church if everybody walked out of this knowing how to pray for an hour? I can guarantee you what would happen. I would do a heck of a lot of less marriage counseling. <laughs> We'd have more people pulling people out of drug and alcohol. We'd see more miracles. Right? All right. Um, global be still and know that I am God. Everything is still quiet now. A great time to listen. Yes. Absolutely. Um... All right, so <laughs> tomorrow night at Sean at 7, we will continue to talk about Jacob, and we will talk about the um, Jacob's Ladder and that story of how God broke into Jacob's life at the worst moment, just like we are anticipating God's going to break into... Oh, 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 just like we're anticipating God's going to break into our life. Okay, okay, i got to add one more thing in here. Um, all right. If you're getting frustrated because you feel you've been praying and you haven't seen anything, just mentally say to yourself, we're in a war. Undoubtedly, there were people who prayed for the Civil War to end. Undoubtedly, there were people who were praying for World War I to end. Undoubtedly, people were praying for World War II. And you get this? This is an absolute war. Satan is... So many Christian quote-unquote prophets are trying to say, this is what the Lord's doing in this time. The Lord's doing the same thing he's always doing, trying to make us look like Jesus, trying to help us defeat our anxiety so we can walk in powerful peace. It's the only thing he ever does, and he uses everything that life throws at you. At the same time, Satan is trying to make you look more like him. And you're saying, wait, he wants me to be evil? Well, sure, but you know what he really is? He's terrified. He's anxious. He's worried. What is it that the demons say when they say, Jesus, we know you. You're the son of God. Have you come to torment us before our time? They know what their end result is. I was just even seeing it in, in Romans, I want to say chapter uh, 4 today, how how... We've been under the bonds of death. I mean, or the rule of... I, I shouldn't even go there if I don't know the whole passage. Satan is the prince of the power of the air. Who breathes the air? We do. So do not... Do not grow weary in well-doing. Keep praying. This is a war. We are sowing life in a place where the enemy has sown and reaped death. Communist China is has been killing Christians for maybe a hundred years. Satan has his talons in that nation. Not saying they aren't amazing people. Not saying there aren't incredible places where the church is, is really doing amazing. But China is a spiritually dark place. And with these viruses they're creating and they're exporting to the rest of the world, Satan has now found a way that he can kill people and he can terrify people. And that's all he needs to do. So what do we do? We act in an opposite spirit. We don't spread goofy rumors on the internet. We don't let people we love spread goofy rumors on the internet. Well, you can't stop them, but you know what I mean. You walk in peace. You have all the peace there is, whether you agree with it or not, because you have the Holy Spirit inside of you. We say, I, I, I may hate this, but I'm going to survive this. And you become completely convinced. I am going to be the peace bringer to everybody around me. All right. So not even close to what I was going to do. Um... Wow, Nicole, both of my two older kids, my 24-year-old and 20-year-old, have broken the chains of addiction? Praise God. That is amazing, Nicole. That is awesome. Thank the Lord. That is fantastic. Thank you for sharing. All right, let's pray. Thank you, Jesus. 
So again, remember, if there is such a thing as spiritual steroids, it's gratitude. The more you just become grateful for everything around you, the more the, the spiritual work you do is enhanced. So let's just take a second and let's just say thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Praise you. Father, I am so thrilled with this report from Nicole that both of her kids are broken the chains of addiction. This is absolutely a miracle. And we're going to stand on that miracle while we contend for another miracle. In the name of Jesus and the power of the Holy Spirit, you've given us the keys to the kingdom. And so we curse COVID-19. We curse this virus down to its DNA cellular structure. We curse the bridges of contagiousness. Father, we grab a hold of the curve and we personally flatten it. Contagiousness will, will stop. People who are fighting it are healed. Be healed right now in the name of Jesus. Doctors and nurses, give them strength and wisdom. People working on a vaccine and a cure, give them supernatural wisdom. They are on the side of life. And Lord, I pray that you will speak to them so clearly they will know there is a God, even if they are a hardened atheist. Father, we believe abundant life flows from abundant death. That's what Easter teaches us. So we contend that after all of this, there will be more spiritual life on the planet, in America, in Washington, in Spokane, and in a funky little town, funky little church in a funky part of town. Because, Father, we refuse to be afraid. We refuse to do anything. We refuse to say anything that Jesus wouldn't say. We will just pursue you with everything we are. And, Lord, we repent for our nation in your name. Forgive us, Father, for following the false god of entertainment the false god of drugs and alcohol, the false god of unbridled sexuality, the false god of um, violence and, and the shedding of innocent blood in abortions, Jesus. Forgive us, Father, for following the false god of money, the false god of power, the false god of self-aggrandizement. We repent on behalf of our nation, Jesus. You've been merciful to us, and now we say, Lord, be merciful to our nation. So, Lord, we are just thankful. We are just thankful for all that you're doing. And we know you've got awesome things in store. And everybody said, amen. All right. So, tomorrow night, Sean at 7. If you missed earlier, you missed jazz guitar tonight. Who knows what the prelude music will be tomorrow. And then Friday night, prayer and worship. And then Sunday's message should be up sometime around Saturday afternoon. God bless you. Love you. Miss you. We will talk. Later.